Okay, it's getting late. It's um, 3.28 in Pennsylvania. Uh, let's see. Uh, 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 uh. Sorry, I should have made it clearer. For it was a non-religious act of saving someone. Really. More of an extended hand, of, oh, of course. An embrace of the power of vibrational energy. Once again, we're dealing with language. Yes, I'm in agreement with that. But let's remember what rehab is about. More of an extended, an embrace of power of vibrational energy. See, there we go talking spiritual language. It's all the same. That's how you're talking spiritual language. You'd have to be at the rehab to know what I was dealing with at the time and everybody else is in their own personal situation. The cat was sitting on my lap too long. Get a tail out of the way, man. So, so, uh, Tom, buddy. More of an extended uh, uh, hand, an embrace of the power, vibration, energy, towards another in a desperate fight within their own hell to pull that person up from the pits of despair to show that you care. Oh, this is perfect because this is another video that I wanted to prove a point on. This is great. To pull that person up from the pits of despair to show you care, yet only met the person hours ago to help crack the shell for the Meek one to fi finally reach out. It's my whole life, man. I'm not the bully. I'm the opposite. Not that I don't make mistakes. But yeah, that's my objective. To, to crack the shell for the meek one to, to finally reach out. Do you know all the people that have been in my life? No. To ask for help to be saved otherwise. Saved. We all interpret that. You can't save them. You can make it. You can lead somebody to water. Someone can lead me to water. Doesn't mean I'm going to drink it or continue to drink it. To ask for help to save otherwise. They are only a mere shadow. Help crack the shell of the meek one to finally reach out. For two weeks, that's what people were doing to me. I had no mind for the first two weeks. I came out of five days of being on two tubes for being rehydrated and shaking so bad, biting the side of my mouth. My glasses were scratched up. I couldn't see, completely scratched. I couldn't see out of them. I had a rubber band on me. Everybody knew me for the guy that had the rubber bands holding his crooked glasses on. To ask for help. To be saved, otherwise they are only a mere shadow in the coming darkness with no light at the end of the tunnel. That was the job of the directors there. We're in a group. It's not my job to save. It's my job is, is to be there and be part of it all. The dam of water and spiritual energy that you speak of flows back and forth to those in need. Uh, you could use all kinds of fancy spiritual words. I said that in my videos. When your dam is full, it spills over to the, to the people that are thirsty and so on with you when you're in your down times. See, if you don't speak the right language, it seems people don't... You're not good. You are not doing what I... Not even saying that you're judging me, but it sure seems like it. You don't even know me. You know me from YouTube. You know me, you know me, mm, that much. Yes, they have saved otherwise. They are the only, only a mere shadow of themselves. They're supposed to follow the program, first of all. That's what the counselor's there for. And the group meetings are to get people together so that they can intermingle like you were talking about, it seems. But you're on the edge of the despair yourself. As you're coming out of it, you're naturally f feeling what the other people are feeling in their distress. And I'm going to tell you what happens when some people do get help. Pull the person up from the pits of despairs. I'm still in the pits. Of, I'm worried about getting my job. The counselor says number one thing is, what's your problem? 
Well, I'm worried about my taxes and this and going back to my job. Alcohol. Remember that. Alcohol is your problem. That's your number one concern here. Nothing else. Everything else is indirect effect. Whatever you're going to do there, however friends you're going to make or enemies or get yourself in trouble trying to make friends, that all happens at a rehab. Do you remember? Show you care. Yet only met the person hours ago. As soon as the alcoholics came in, because I was one, there was only a few alcoholics. And when they came into the lunchroom, I saw them shake and I said, that's an alcoholic. I immediately went over and met the alcoholics. The drug addict kids that came in were playing basketball on free time the next day after they got their night's sleep. All these kids taking the Oxycontins and stuff. What a joke. The alcoholics, like myself, were in tremors. I was in emergency for five days, like I said, before I even got there, before they allowed me to come in. So to show you care, yet only met the person hours ago to help crack the shell for the meek one to finally reach out, to ask help to be saved. Otherwise, they are only a mere shadow in the coming darkness with no light at the end of this tunnel. No, that's what they're in the rehab for. Not to listen to me, to listen to counselor and follow the professional instructions. The rest is comes with it. I am not the instructor of the rehab to save people. You know what medicines they had me on there? Blood pressure medicine? The other things? So I wouldn't go into convulsions? I gotta take care of myself before I can save anybody else. Little hands at a time as I'm getting better. So why do you ask? Am I having too fun in the video in here? Is that why you ask? I have fun because I've been to hell. I ain't going back. Woke up to the fact that my mind was hijacked by religion and other things. And I continue to try to be aware. He taught me. Daryl said, awareness, gratefulness, and appreciation. He didn't say no kiss ass, be nice to everybody all the time. That's a side effect, okay? You do that and you get your backstabbed that comes with it the love comes with when you take care of yourself first remember this is a rant so if I get everything exactly wrong you want to write it down that's okay do ask for help to save otherwise they're only a mere shadow in the coming darkness with no light at the end of the tunnel explanation point explanation point explanation point I'm in the rehab they're in the rehab they're to follow the instructions of the rehab and be kind to one another while they're there the best they can amongst their convulsions and, convulsions and shakes. Yes, things don't always work out no matter how hard or how many times one tries to reach out. Yes. Sometimes we fail miserably. No, fail miserably to see the person going down for the count. No, they don't see themselves going down for the count. I blamed myself my whole life. And I finally realized I got to take responsibility for myself. I, but everything was my fault. Now I realized, you know what? No, that person's wrong. No, that person's doing wrong to me. You people that think that you're always wrong and it's your fault when stuff happens, you got to get over that. Who's going down for the count? Were you at my rehab? Of course not. Let me tell you. Group meeting, the guy was crying about what his mom did to him, what happened sexually with him and his mom at rehab. The guy busted out in tears. You wouldn't think he would, but he did. I said, it's all right, it wasn't your fault. I didn't even put my arm around. I just got close to him, like everybody in the group meeting. Everybody else was all quiet. No, he hated more than anybody else for the next two weeks that I was hoping to get out so that I could have my job back and support my family that was worried to hell about me, who got me in here, in there. He spited me for two weeks. Why? Because people have psychological problems. He hated me after that, and everybody told me. Everybody said, man, you were the only one that helped him at that meeting, and then reached out and comforted him about what happened to him. I said, yeah, I told him it wasn't even, it's not even his fault. It wasn't his fault what he happened between him and his mom. 
The guy spited me for two weeks. And everybody at the lunch table, when we had to sit at the same table, said, man, he's got something in for you. Ever since that time, and they knew it too, ever since that time, wasn't it so strange? I have went out of my way to help people. Certain people don't get it. It goes in reverse. And they will hold it on you for however long that you're in their mind. Everybody's different, man. Everybody's different. You take care of you. I take care of me. And the people who need me, it will spill out, spill out to what they need from me. And I and them. We share in life. I said the word automatically. You thought of it as mechanically. No, I meant automatically as a human being out of love that, that, that I treated these people well when I was around them at rehab. Who's to save? Use that word save. Save in what way? Non-religious, you said. Okay. But still, you can't save someone in rehab. And like I said afterwards, when I commented afterwards, how would I know what their lifestyle is after they left, what they went home to, and what they did? All I know is I'm 13, almost 13 months, 13 years sober. Thankfully, and my family is thankfully. And that's not, that's all that matters. Not to you YouTube people, land. It's what my family is first. YouTube, you're, you're, you're out here somewhere. It's my family. They care that I'm sober. The guys in rehab don't even remember me, most likely. Do you know what they did? When I was in the room trying to sleep, that's a whole other story that I wanted to tell. I was going into convulsions, and the people you want me to reach out to opening the window at 1 in the morning to sneak out to McDonald's and have sex with the girls in the parking lot while I'm going through convulsions, completely soaked because I'm going through convulsions, getting two hours of sleep next, going to the meetings the next day, trying to keep my eyes open because these young kids in their early 20s, 20, mid-20s wanted to go out and have sex. The one kid guard the window and leave it open. So it was 14 degrees out and the room was freezing. The one guy guarded the door. I'm shaking and sweating, have no other clothes to wear, going into convulsions every night. Be nice to people when you can and when you should, when you can. When is it smart to? Yeah, you just shook my bottle, man. Don't ask me any more stupid questions. Unless they're real. Ha ha, low, low, right? Pits of despair. I was in the pits of despair. My, it was my responsibility to get home to my family and to not get in a fight with someone for the next two weeks that wanted to fight me because I comfort them, spite me, pull on my jacket at the table and stuff like that. You have no idea what someone else is going through. Text. This is why I hate text. It's why I hate text. Because people hide behind it. They come back in the room. I'm freezing. I have one sheet and it's soaked. I had to hang it off in the in the bathroom. Hopefully it would dry a little bit. There ain't no clothes in there. They had to get me. Oh, I thought I get clothes. I had, a, I had a hole in my tooth that would get caught on the side of my mouth. My glasses were hanging off my face. They were all scratched because I couldn't see them because the protective coating wore off. Yeah. I'd go on and on. I could write a book about it. There you go. There's more to come, too. More to come. Doesn't matter anymore. YouTube has taught me a lot about people. Thank you.